Hello coders! In this video we are looking at a straightforward approach to day 8 of the advent of code 2022. This puzzle is approachable by anyone who has learned the basics of coding. More specifically in this guide we're going to be using strings, two dimensional arrays, loops, and boolean logic. That's it, nothing too fancy. I've posted a link to the puzzle in the description below. If you get stuck, don't hesitate to post your question in the comments or go ahead and post on the Advent of Code subreddit. Tons of people there happy to help you out. And of course, if you find this video helpful, click that like button, let me know. And if you wanna see more Advent of Code, be sure to subscribe. Let's get to it. The expedition comes across a peculiar patch of tall trees which have been planted carefully in a grid. The elves explain that a previous expedition planted these trees as a reforestation effort. Now they're curious if this would serve as a good location for a tree house. Using their North Pole certified quadcopter 9000 SUX, they begin to survey the height of each tree in the grid. After only a few minutes, the quadcopter lands and produces a printout showing the height of each tree in the grid. Using this data, can you determine how many trees are visible from outside the grid? Welcome back to day eight of the advent of code. I'm Captain Coder and we've been on this jungle island for just over a week. Once again, the elves need our help. They really aren't that great with numbers, are they? Anyway, this puzzle is straightforward if you don't mind having a less than optimal solution, which in my opinion is just fine. But let's start by taking a look at what exactly we are being asked to produce. As you heard, the elves want to determine how many trees in a grid can be seen from the edge of the grid. So we're given this 2D array here, this input of tree heights, so it comes in a grid, two dimensional grid here, and each tree height is a single integer between zero and nine. We need to determine if a tree is visible from the edge of the grid, and we know a tree is seen from the edge of a grid if for each other tree between it and the edge, the height of those trees are less than the height of that tree. So for example, this five here can be seen on the right side because the three, the three and the two are all less than this five. If we look at this five here, it's not visible from the right side because the nine is taller. However, it is visible from the south because this three is lower and it's visible from the left because on this side we have two threes and those are both lower than the five. Let's take a look at this five here. This five, if we go to the left, it's not visible from the outside because it's blocked by this tree that has the same height as it, but it is visible from the top because this three is lower than this five. So we want to count all of the trees in this grid that can be seen on the outside from any of the sides here. Now that we have a better grasp on what the puzzle is asking us to do, let's talk about a strategy. First, we need to convert our string input into a 2D array of integer values. So this is coming in as a string and we need to parse it in into a 2D array of integers so we can compare the heights. Once we have this, we're gonna write a function that takes in our height map and row and column position and tells us, gives us back a Boolean saying true if the tree can be seen from any of the edges and false if it can't. And with all of those things in place, just those two things, the third thing we can do is solve the puzzle. We just iterate over each position in our grid, checking, is this position visible from the outside? And if so, we increment a counter, and at the end, we report that number. All right, so with our three-step plan in place, let's go. 
So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to implement a way to parse in our input here. So I'm parsing in an array of rows. So it's gonna be each row from the input file. And then I want to return a grid, a two dimensional array here that contains all of the integers parsed in. And you know me, to give myself confidence that it's going to work, I've gone ahead and I've written this test here. So I'm using a test framework. If you're not familiar with unit test framework, that's okay. It's worth learning, but you can also do some print line debugging here to give yourself confidence that it's working. Just make sure you give yourself some kind of a test to know it's working. So here are the rows of the example input. And then I'm expecting them to produce this array here. So I've gone ahead and manually translated it to this array. And then after I call my height example, my parse height map on my example, I check that my expectation and my height map are equal. And when this is true, it'll give me confidence that it's good to go. So go ahead and give that a try. See if you can write yourself a little test for your parse height map, then implement your parse height map and test it out. Hopefully you now have a parse height map method or function that's working for you. I have this green check mark, Tommy, that my test is passing. If you're not here yet, go ahead and pause. I'm about to show my solution. So over here, I have a function, parse height maps, taken in my rows. I first initialize an array for my height map that is going to be a square grid based on my input. So the length of my input is one side of it. And I know that my input's a square. So I have a length and length giving me an array that's gonna have enough spaces for my data. Then I go ahead and I loop through my entire data set. So this is a nested for loop, a double for loop here. So I say my rows, starting row zero, loop through, increment until I get to the last row in my height map. Then for each one of those, I'm gonna go column by column. So I do row and column. With two dimensional arrays, I really, really recommend using row and column to represent it instead of X and Y. X and Y tend to get people confused. So we're using row and column. And then I essentially set the value in my height map, I index in there by my row and my column, and I just parse in the value from my rows at that position, row position and the column position. Finally, after I've done building this, I just return it. With our grid successfully parsed in, we're ready to check if each of the trees is visible from the outside. So given a position, do we know whether or not that specific tree can be seen from any side? I've defined a function here called isVisible. It's going to accept in a height map as well as a row and column to check, and it's gonna return a Boolean true if it's visible from one of the sides and false otherwise. It turns out that this can be a little bit tricky to do. It can be a lot to do in one step. So I am planning to break it down into four steps. I'm gonna check if it's visible to the east, visible to the north, visible to the south, or visible to the west. So to do this, I'm gonna start by writing a test for just is visible east. All right, so I've written that test here. We take a look at it, I'm failing. I have probably over tested here. I painstakingly, I don't know if painstakingly is the right word. Let me zoom out here. I've gone through and tested every position in this array here. I've thought it through by hand and determined if I'm testing visibility to the east for each one of these positions, this is my outcome. So when I am done with my implementation for is visible east, I will be relatively confident, very confident that it will work for any possible input. So let's think about how is visible east is going to work. We are checking everything to the east of us, seeing if any of the trees are equal to or greater than our height. So we have to write a loop here. It's going to start one position to the east. So our column here, we're gonna start one position to the east. So we're gonna increment it by one. 
and loop until we get to the end of the array, checking to see if any of those values are greater than or equal. If they are, we just return false. Say, oh, we found one. We're not visible, return false. Otherwise, we keep going. If we get all the way to the end, we return true and say that we have reached the edge and we can be seen from the edge. Go ahead, write yourself a test, then give it a shot. If all went well, you now have a passing test for your is visible east. If you don't have a passing test yet, go ahead and pause, see if you can get your implementation working and then check out my solution. So here we are, my is visible east is accepting our height map, a row and a column. I extract the height of the tree at the specified row and column. I get the size of my height map, how far I'm gonna have to iterate over it. Then I create an index C representing the column of each tree to the east. And I start it one tree to the east. This loop is gonna continue while my C, well that index is less than the size, so while it's within the bounds of my array, I increment and for each one of those trees, I get that height and I check, is that height greater than or equal to my current height? If so, I return, tr return false immediately and I keep checking. If I get to the edge of my grid, I exit my loop and return true. So you may have guessed it. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna implement the is visible west, north, south, as well as the overall is visible. And I've gone ahead and I've written tests here. They're all failing because I don't have an implementation for them. I have, again, probably over tested. I've tested every position in my example here. I've gone through and figured out which ones are visible, which ones are not visible, and written a test for each of my directions, west, north, south, and the overall visible, which, oh, it is. it says it's passing here, has this little green check mark, but it's not, I'm failing. And so the next thing I need to do is actually implement each one of these. I highly recommend implementing them one at a time, running your test each time you do it to give yourself confidence that it's going to work. Then once you have all four of those, your is visible becomes really, really straightforward. You can simply call is visible east or is visible west or is visible north or is visible south. If it's visible on any of the sides, it is visible. Give it a shot. Here I am, happy as a clam. What does that saying even really mean? I'm happy as a clam because I've got all these green check marks telling me my tests are passing, that all of the assumptions I've made about how this function should work are working in that way. So if you're not here yet, go ahead and pause and then I'll show you my solution. Here it is, is visible. If we have each of our is visible helper methods working, it becomes really easy. We just say return is visible north, is visible east, is visible south, is visible west. We use the or operator here to sort of combine these. If any of them are true, we return true. And each one of these is implemented very similar to our is visible east, except we go in a different direction. So for example, is visible west, we start one left of our column and then continue to decrement to the left checking. The inside is the same. North, we are going up, so we're decrementing our row. And south, we're incrementing our row. So you just gotta be really careful, especially on these ones. It's really, really easy to have a copy and paste mistake. So watch out for that. So with our parse method and our is visible method in place, we are ready to solve this puzzle. It's relatively straightforward. You're gonna parse your input. You're going to iterate over every position inside of your height map, checking if it is visible. If it is, you're gonna increment a counter, and then when you're done iterating through that whole thing, you're gonna display the result. Go ahead, give it a shot.
If everything's gone according to plan, your program is now executing over your example input and displaying that there are 21 visible trees. If we go back to our problem description, we see that that is the solution to the example problem. That is what I'm getting here. If you're not yet seeing 21 visible trees on your example, go ahead and pause. But here is my program. I read in my example.txt file and it comes to me in a array of strings. I pass that off to my parse height map method and get back a two dimensional array of integers that I can now use. I initialize my counter to zero. I loop through each row. I loop through each column and I check is that position visible on this height map. If it is, I increment my count. And finally, after I'm done iterating, I report the count of visible trees. And now all that's left to do is scroll on down, get my full puzzle input, feed it into my program, cross my fingers, and hopefully get a beautiful gold star. One thing I can't help but note is that this specific solution, although very straightforward, actually is very inefficient. It is reading in inputs in our array over and over and over and over and checking. There is a clever solution here where you don't actually have to look at all of the numbers over and over and over again. That is actually quite a bit more efficient. As a bonus, I challenge you, can you write a more efficient solution? I hope you'll take this challenge and good luck. Hopefully at this point you've submitted your solution and received a beautiful gold star. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, let me know, click that like button. If you wanna see more Advent of Code Guides, click subscribe so you'll be notified when they're uploaded. And as always, have a beautiful day. Keep on coding, keep on growing, and you're welcome back anytime.